from little acorns, mighty oaks do grow. Mm -hmm. You'll pick up a, a thread, which was, I had no real clue what I wanted to do. And working hard was equally as important as to what you knew. Yeah. So if somebody says, you can't do something, I go, yes, I can. And a job to work in the America's Cup as a commercial director of British America's Cup team, oh, yacht racing. Imagine Formula One on steroids. Moved out to Valencia. So my office was a super yacht. So basically, I was sitting on a super yacht, um, entertaining guests, doing America's Cup, so that was very cool. I couldn't have done my job if I didn't go full throttle. Negotiation is a blood sport. So I took a 50% pay cut to go. And I, and I thought, at that time in my life, yeah, this is an adventure. Other directors of the LTA, so this is in Kensington in London, rings me up, said, I've read your tennis strategy. Can you come up and talk to us about it? So I said, oh, that sounds fun. So we had 50 odd offices around the country. We had, uh, you know, hundreds of staff working in, in the development team, which was fantastic. Num number one is uh, our reputations, everything, because that's how you build a business and how you keep a business. Welcome to the game, Adam, uh, Oaks Consultancy Finder and CEO. Thank you very much for having me. I'm really pleased uh, to be here. Yeah, let's start with um, the day to day. So what's the day to day like as a CEO? Uh, well, the day, to, the day to day is, I suppose, I have to make sure that uh, the business delivers uh, everything it needs to. So uh, we've got clients who are happy. We've got uh, staff who are uh, enjoying their work and staff who are thinking that they're, they're doing a good job. Um, I have a lot of time spent looking at uh, the money and how much money we're making and are we doing the right things like that. Um, yeah, so, so every day um, is different. And that's the one, you know, the brilliant thing of consultancy mm. that, you know, the day changes because you get different clients, you get different projects. Uh, so, yeah, very yeah. varied, but I spend a lot of time looking okay. for money and a lot of time looking at whether clients yeah, are yeah. happy. So it's all about the bottom line. And <laughs> it is, is yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I think there's a lot of important things to me. So num number one is... Uh, our reputations, everything. So mm -hmm. I really want our clients to think we're doing a good job. Uh, I really want us to work hard at doing the very best we can for our clients because that's mm -hmm. how you build a business and how you keep a business. Mm -hmm. uh, but underlying that, obviously, you've got to pay all the wages and mm -hmm. you've got to make sure that you can uh, keep the company growing and developing. Uh, and therefore, you've got to look at the bottom line. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, so then, Let's go from the beginning. So actually, what does Oaks offer for people that don't know? Okay, so o Oaks is um, a management consultancy company. Mm -hmm. um, and so loosely, what that means is that we help clients solve problems or work things out. So okay. people buy our time to come in and help them uh, sort things out. And, and what um, Oaks works in four sectors. So we work in sport, mm -hmm. um, which is everything to do with professional sport, everything to do with like the national governing body. So it could be the FA, it mm -hmm. could be cricket, tennis, and things like that. Uh, we work in sport for development, which is about uh, using sport as a tool for social good. So we try and help uh, organizations um, uh, to deliver social benefit, but use sport as a tool. We work in the charity sector and we work in education. Mm. And within those four sectors, we we then um, help people uh, with strategies. So we'll we'll come in and help them to work out where, where they want to go, what they want to do, mm -hmm. and how they get there. And then, uh, in a similar way with our community foundation, we help with business plans because mm -hmm. uh, you can have a, a nice glossy document. But yeah, you've yeah. got to work out how to deliver it. So we help on that. Mm -hmm. um, and then we help with the implementation of those things. So or we help organizations to generate money. We help organizations to build their brands, mm. et cetera. Yeah. So, so uh, how did how did the name come about, Oaks? Uh, I yeah, could. Yeah. I get, so there's okay. there's a, a real story okay. and there's the story I now, now tell. Okay. So uh, the story, the, well, the story I now tell is that um, uh, from little acorns, mighty oaks do grow. So mm. I thought if you're gonna if you're gonna yeah, build yeah. a company, you know, have a company where oak is it's a big strong uh, tree. Mm. Um, and then the second thing was it was just uh, a British company. Oak is is a British tree. So I thought here we go, let's have oak. Okay, that's yeah. not the real story though. The real story was um, I was doing some work before we formed the company. 
I was doing a, a golf course uh, diversification project. So I was helping a farm um, to uh, consider whether it developed uh, a golf course and country club. So okay. that's, that was the project they were asking me to do. Mm. And then I went to Invoice and they said, you need a company name. And I thought, I haven't got a clue what the company yeah, name yeah. will be. So I said, we'll call it Oaks um, okay. because it was Oak Farm. And I thought, there mm. we go. So that's the true story. Okay, okay, uh, yeah, yeah. But the pretend story is mighty... Uh, uh, Mighty yeah, Oaks. Uh, yeah, yeah. And plus, like all them different facets that you mentioned, they are different branches of the same tree. Because th that's what I thought it was. Yeah. yeah. When I first heard of it, I thought that was what it was. But so, what came first in terms of the the branches? So you got sport, you got schooling, education, business planning. So yeah. what kind of what what was first when you first started the company? Okay, one one hundred percent, we were a sports company. So okay. all of my career for probably twenty five years pre-forming Oaks was mm. in sport. Um, and and therefore my passion was sport and that's what I wanted to, to work in. Mm. So probably for the first five years we were all sport, nothing, nothing else but sport. Okay. And then and then after five years we said we've we're doing some good things. So we've got some good products and services and they're not just relevant to sport. Mm. And therefore probably then we moved into the charity sector okay. uh, and the sport for development sector. Uh, because they were quite closely aligned, mm. and then the last four or five years, we've uh, we moved into education and working with multi academy trusts. Mm. Um, and I love all of those sectors. I mm. thought I thought I wouldn't, but I really do enjoy working across um, you know all of the different things because mm. it stretches your mind in different yeah. different ways. So let, let's go from the beginning in terms of you. So when you're on about you were on sports, uh, sports was your thing and your passion. So you were part of the athletics, I think. That's before right. or prior to your Oaks. So uh, let's talk about your formative years. So let's go back to, okay. I don't know, let's say maybe 18, 19 year old Adam and what he was kind of thinking. And yep. if that kind of aligned with what you're doing today. Okay. No, absolutely. So you'll pick up a, a thread, which was, I had no real clue what I wanted okay. to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I thought uh, for a long time, I wanted to be a PE teacher. Mm. Uh, and then I worked out I didn't really want to teach. Um, <laughs> I, I like sport. Okay. But I didn't want to teach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, How come? So I don't know. I just yeah. uh, just eighteen, nineteen. I yeah. thought ah, no, I don't really fancy that. Yeah, then yeah. I thought I want to be a chef. Okay. Uh, so I got a, a, a place at the College of Food and Domestic Art in Birmingham. Okay. Uh, and then decided I didn't want to be a chef. Mm. Uh, I love cooking, but I didn't want to be a chef. Okay. okay. So my mum and dad sort of lost patience and said, mm. "Go, go and get a job." Um, so I started working at Fox Holly's uh, Leisure Centre okay, in yeah, yeah. Acox Green. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I uh, collected money in the AstroTurf pitch. Mm. So basically I had uh, a little tobacco tin and people would come and pay their money to run around the track and I collected mm. money. Um, and that really ignited my passion for working in sport. So then I applied. I worked at Fox Holly's for two or three years and sort of got promoted a few layers up. Mm. Um, then uh, I applied for a job 150 odd miles away in Somerset uh, mm. to be a deputy manager of a leisure centre. Okay. So this was when I was 20. Um, moved down to Somerset, took a big pay cut to, to go. Uh, within six months, the uh, manager left <clears throat> and I took over as, as the manager. Mm. And by real, through real luck, we won the Sports Council, which is now Sport England. We won the Sports Council Management of the Year Award okay. for the country. So yeah, yeah. Uh, we became a gymnastics centre of excellence. So okay. we uh, we sort of hosted loads of gymnastics uh, competitions. Mm. And I ran that leisure centre for quite a few years. I then joined... Oh, one second, before we cut it, yeah. I've got a quick question. In terms of you um, developing yourself at the first, uh, when you're collecting the wages yeah, yeah. at Fox Alley's, um, why we why get promoted? Why why go for it? Like because you were just saying you're in between stuff and yeah. you obviously chose chefing and then you thought I don't want to be a chef. Yeah. I don't want to be a teacher. And so why kind of stick with this? Obviously you got a love for sport, but then yeah. it's kind of yeah. Why did I get promoted? Cracky, that's a mm. question probably. Yeah. I, no, no, I, no, no. So no, why did you want to get promoted? So why, why did why, I want what, to get promoted? So, so you could have just yeah. gone into the job and just done the bare minimum and just thought you know what I'm going home. I get my money and that's it. Yeah. So, like, why kind of you obviously done extras? So why do that? To kind yeah. Of, Get I, try, I, try, I mean, I whatever I wanted to do, I wanted to work hard. And okay. probably as my career went on, yeah. I learned that working hard was equally as important as to what you knew. Mm. Uh, and I wanted to deliver a good job. And then I think probably at 18, 19, I was really cocky. 
Okay. Uh, and I always believed I could do a better job than, than the next than person. I'd got. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I yeah. thought, yeah, let's, if there was an opportunity, mm. I put myself forward. And I wasn't, I wouldn't call myself ambitious because mm. I didn't, I didn't set out to be the big boss or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But when opportunities came up, I thought, I'm going to grab hold of those. I'm mm. going to see. Uh, there was no second happened. guessing. There was no kind of like, oh, mm. it's not for me or like, I can't be asked or like, you know, you know, because yeah. a lot of people go through that. Yeah. That's why they kind of stay at the same trajectory they're on because they yeah. don't want to. Like, or they, they're too scared to go the extra mile. Or. Yeah. Well, I'm probably one of the, the luckiest people in the sense that I love my job. Okay. And, and if you love your job, it doesn't feel like a job. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, you know, when I, when I worked in the leisure centre, the first and the second leisure centre, I got to finish work and sit in the bar with uh, the customers and okay. chat. Yeah, I yeah. could play squash every day. Mm. I could go for a swim every day. I could. So, you know, there was loads of benefits about working in a sporty environment. Mm. And, and when you work in a sporty environment, people are nice people. You know, yeah, they're yeah, there yeah. to enjoy themselves. Yeah, yeah. And I fed off that. So okay. I thought, this is quite a cool yeah, job. Yeah. So I used to end up working like 70 hour weeks and uh, okay, okay. just for fun. And yeah. just think this is cool. Like, <laughs> yeah. And my career, I've tried every time I've moved on in my life, I've mm. tried to sort of uh, grab hold of that fun bit. Okay, okay. So then, you know, so there's having fun and enjoying the job and there's going to Somerset. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah so that was, how did that transition come about? Because you I, mentioned it like it was easy, like, well, it was scary. It. it was scary. So I, I was offered another job in, uh, in Birmingham. Okay for twice as much money as I earned okay. in Fox Hollies. Yeah, yeah. And I turned that down and took the job in Somerset for half the money I earned. Okay. So I took a, yeah. a, a 50% pay cut to mm. go. And I, and I thought at that time in my life, yeah, this is an adventure and, uh, and you've got to grab hold of an adventure. So okay. uh, I'd never lived away from my parents. Uh, I rented a room in a house with three other guys. Mm. Uh, you know, was a rubbish, you know, yeah, looking yeah, yeah. after myself. But you learn, don't you? Yeah. yeah. And um, and then after a year, I'm managing a leisure centre, mm. uh, which was hosting gymnastics uh, yeah. sort of but you just said you're, You just said you're not ambitious. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure is it. it no, you know, you, know, you see what I'm saying there? Because obviously yeah. I've never heard the story before. So okay. you just mentioned to me now yeah, that yeah. you kind of like, you wanted to like, obviously not be by parents and kind of like flee the nest and do, do yeah. it on your own. Yeah. So that's ambition right there. So. Yeah, it probably was. I didn't mm. know it was ambition. Okay, I'm so a you, very competitive person. Yeah, yeah. So if somebody says you can't do something, yeah. I go, yes, I okay, can. Yeah, and, yeah. and I can do it better than yeah, you think yeah, I can. Yeah, so yeah. all the way through my life, I've been competitive. Mm. And and when we won this when we won the management of the award uh, year award, I thought uh there's a competition here. Let's put in an entry. Let's say we think we're the best leisure okay. centre in the country. Yeah, yeah. And we went through the various, we won the regional one, we won the sort of uh, mm. Southwest one. And then and then suddenly we're in a national competition and we win. Okay. Um, and that was quite cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, what was that feeling like? It was good. Because mm. yeah, uh, well, how old are you then? 21, 20? No, I was t yeah, just 21. Just, just 21. 21. Yeah. And I bought my, um, I bought my first house uh, okay. when I was 20. Okay, uh, okay. So, and I got my mortgage because I played, you would never, this would never happen now, but I played the uh, manager of the building society at Squash. Mm. And he said, if you can, uh, if you can beat me, then you can have a 110% mortgage. Okay. So I beat him, got 110% yeah, 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 mortgage. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then, yeah, yeah. so then I was sort of off then and I was. Mm. Um, but were you feeling on top of the world? Because like, yeah. at 20, it's kind of like, that's kind of mad. Yeah, yeah. And really then a year good. after you get the best uh, ledger in the in the country. Yeah, yeah, it was it was really mm. really good, and I made some lifelong friends, uh, yeah, yeah. and you know loved Somerset as a as a place to live. There mm. was great countryside. I was mm. out on a mountain bike and doing yeah. doing so good what, stuff. So, what a career on there. Um, well, then I got offered a job. So we won the Sports Council Management Award, and the Sports Council then came to me and said, "Would I be interested in a job?" Mm. And I said, yeah. So I became a regional officer and then a senior regional officer okay. for the sports council working mm -hmm. across the Southwest. Um, so why, 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 why suddenly move? Cause yeah, I just thought. What a new challenge. Yeah. And it was, mm. it was somebody, I was flattered. So somebody came to me and said, do you want to, do you want another job? And mm. I thought, yep, this is a, this is a good opportunity. And, okay. uh, and it was very, and that was almost a bit consultancy. So I was going out to work with local authorities to help them build a 
running track or mm. to help them think through whether they needed a leisure center. So I suddenly was going from being a center manager mm. to doing something very different. And and I it taught me a lot. And then you'll laugh at the next sort of oh, thing yeah. because then um, – uh, as part of that, you had to write strategies for different sports. So mm. I'd never written a strategy. I hadn't got a clue what I was doing. Yeah, yeah. But I wrote a strategy for gymnastics, uh, athletics, which was my sport, and then tennis. Okay. A strategy um, in terms of what? In terms of, so, uh, so Athletic it- Southwest, yeah. the governing body for athletics yeah, in yeah. the Southwest, wanted to decide what it was going to do. So how okay, was it going to okay. grow the sport? Also for that little facet there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So they came yeah, they yeah. came to me and said, uh, or they came to the sports council, and mm-hmm. then I was assigned that sport. Can you write a strategy for us to build okay. and grow our sport? So yeah. I did that with athletics, with gymnastics, with um, with tennis. Mm. And what I also did was write the women in sports strategy for the Southwest. Okay. And as a bloke, a 21-year-old guy, yeah. um, I'd got no expertise in that, but it was great because I had to go and learn mm. and stuff Do you like think that. that's important? The, well, not important, that's kind of like in your favour, the fact that you had no clue. Because yeah, yeah. what I see a lot of nowadays is where it kind of becomes a lot, it becomes robotic in terms of like, because they've got this academia, yeah. they've got all this knowledge, but they ain't got no real like life people skills. Yeah. So they kind of like just get fixated on the academia when yeah. you got to build that human relationship and that exactly. human connection. Yeah, and I mm. and I always think life's much simpler than people want you to believe. Yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't go to university, no mm. choice, and it was different. You know, thirty odd, forty years ago, whatever, it was it was different. But I didn't go to university, and so I thought, play on the strength, which is you know, you're given a you're given a challenge, you're mm. given something to work out. Yeah, yeah. Work out what the solution. <laughs> is. So if if they say we've not got enough people doing athletics in the southwest, mm. how do you get enough people doing athletics yeah. in the southwest? So how do you? Well, it was just it was experimentation. Do you advertise it more? Have you got to get more coaches? Have you got to undo more venue? You know, create more venues. So, and that's what I'm saying. Often the solution is nowhere near as complicated as people make it. Mm. And consultants will tell you that it's a really hard thing to sort. And, yeah. they, and they'll be very academic. Yeah. It's a load of rubbish. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, simplicity is that, yeah, key. Yeah, yeah 100%, because that's part of the game. Like, yeah, yeah. Everyone absolutely. likes to build smokes and mirrors, but fundamentally, like if you just work hard at it, keep going and figure out a way, then you're halfway there. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, absolutely. So the, the sports council then led me to my next job. So okay. um, the Lawn Tennis Association as the national governing body of, of tennis in mm. the country had never had a development uh, department before. They'd okay. never had a development director. So then I was 20, 27, 28, something okay. like that. Yeah. And the one of the directors of the LTA, so this is in Kensington in London, okay. rings me up said, I've read your tennis strategy. Mm. Can you come up and talk to us about uh, what we should do in terms of development moving forward? So Mm. I went and saw this person, sat with this person. At the end of the conversation, they said, would you like the job as uh, the new development director for the Lawn Tennis Association? Okay. So I said, oh, that sounds fun. So I packed all my stuff up, Mm. moved up to uh, London, and and just started a new life living in London okay. as as the development director. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm thinking oh, I ain't got a clue what I'm doing here. Yeah. So then Before, I had to wait, hold up. So you know on the tennis strategy. Yeah. Talk me through a tennis strategy. So talk me through like not the basics. You don't have to go like in a long winded process, but just yeah. the basics, just for people that don't know. Okay. Like, I have an idea what it is, but for people that don't know. Okay. So assume you're you're in charge of tennis and you've yeah, got to write yeah. a strategy. So the bits you would look at are um, how do you get people involved? Mm-hmm. How do you get people to participate? Yeah. So what 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 schemes, what programs, what opportunities are you going to create? Yeah. So what's the carrot? What's the carrot? Yeah. Ah, well, tennis is a fun sport. Tennis no, no, no so, so I'm saying that's the carrot. Yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. carrot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so number, yeah, absolutely yeah, that's yeah. the carrot, yeah. So number one is how you're going to get people involved. When they're involved, how are you going to keep them involved? Mm. So are you going to create clubs? Are you going to create competition? Are you going to create training courses mm-hmm. for them so they can go on and develop? And the minute you get into how you're going to keep them, you need coaches, you need officials, and so on. Then the third stage really, okay, so you've got people who are talented. Mm-hmm. What talent pathway are you going to give them? Yeah. And then you're going to get people right at the top of the elite Okay, how are you going to get them into the world competitions and so mm-hmm. on? So really simple from getting yeah. them involved, 
keeping yeah. them involved, yeah, yeah. developing their talent, to putting them on the podium. Mm. So that's a tennis strategy. Mm. And okay. so when when so I was, how do you how do you kind of like build a smoke and mirrors around it? Because if, if I explain the podcast, it's simple. Like I'm having a conversation, but yeah. obviously when you're in the chair, it's a lot more. It's a lot more different. Like there's a lot of other extenuating circumstances that you kind of deal with loads. with any job. But yeah. So when you're on about a tennis strategy, so let's say that you're sitting with uh, was he a director or? Yeah, it was one of the directors of the lawn tennis. Yeah, so he's one of the directors. So you're sitting with him. So how do you kind of build? the the i don't know what you call it the the um the image around it so it's so it's not so simple because obviously anyone can explain it in a simple term but yeah. how do you kind of like make him understand that it's actually a bigger deal than what it is well i d- i d- probably didn't try to do that okay you know they said yeah. to me they and and so quite weird i've mm. gone from the leisure center yeah. and almost not had an interview to get the job with the sports cancer. Yeah, yeah. I've then done something at the sports cancer, got recognized for doing it. Mm-hmm. And it was obviously okay. Went to the Lawn Tony Association, got a job without a big interview. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so I've gone three stages through my career without yeah. really having an interview. When yeah. I sat with the director, I just said, so what do you want to achieve? And they said, well, we've got X thousand people playing. Yeah, yeah. We want Y thousand people playing. How mm. are we going to do it? And I said, well, this is what I would do. Yeah, yeah. And then they said, oh, we, our club numbers keep going down. Mm. What are we going to do? And I said, well, this is what I would do. Yeah, yeah. And then, so I didn't make it complicated. Yeah, yeah. No, no, just, no, that's what I was hoping you would say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because again, simplicity is key. Yeah. Yeah, Because yeah, yeah. uh, that's what I see a lot when, like, you know, when people just start uh, chatting, basically, like they give you like, this whole like big image. And yep. whereas it's just simple, like it's kind of like, yep. like I could sit here again, the example of the podcast. I was just playing a game there, but I was trying to like pretend as if like, yeah. you know, the other way around. But when you're doing the podcast, it's just having a conversation where like, Absolutely. and the circumstances are the fact that you just can't have a hold the conversation. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah. And anyone can do it. Yeah. But it's about those one percent in those moments. Yeah. 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 I'm going to put myself out of a job, aren't I? Okay. If I keep saying consultancy is easy. <laughs> yeah, then, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. but I think, I think honestly, it's the best policy. Like, yeah. It's Absolutely. Hard. Because uh, that's what I feel like. I don't know about you, but so when did you kind of learn that? Like, because obviously you learned that from the beginning of you know, in terms of being honest, kind of gets you further, like you said. Yeah. Because you're honest, and then three kind of successions in a row where you got promoted. Yeah. But then when you become, uh, so what was the job title role there? I was development director. Yeah, so development yeah. director. Yeah, so yeah. then you know when you kind of get that title, a lot of people kind of like change when they get a title. I'm yeah. not saying you did, but how did you kind of maintain your integrity and maintain who you are? Um. Because it's a tough question. I've gone, yeah. I'd, I mean, obviously, you, pra- you perhaps at points become a bit more serious because mm. you've, you've got to go and present to a board or you've got to go and do a big presentation in yeah, front yeah. of a conference. So you do get a little bit more serious. Mm. But underlying that, and I had a lot of staff. So we had 50-odd offices around the country. Mm. We had uh, you know hundreds of staff working in, in the development team, which was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, but I cared about the people that work there. So I wanted them to have a fun job. And I wanted them to feel that they were making a difference. Mm. And so I made my style fun. Okay. So, you know, we would we would work really hard, but then we'd have great social things to do. You know, mm. we would meet up and have conferences across the country and we'd have a really good party. Okay, so, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so I tried to, I've always, always tried to create a fun environment mm. alongside the serious So stuff. where did that come from? I don't know, it's probably, I like fun. Okay, okay, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, so maybe there's a bit of selfishness. Mm. You know, when I when I go to work, I like to laugh a lot. I yeah, like yeah. to I like to have the banter with the staff. Mm. Um, you know, and, and if you're, um, I can't take myself too seriously because I'm yeah, not yeah. pretty serious. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah, so, so I, I suppose it's a personality thing. Mm. Um, and no, I got out of it what I it, wanted. Was there a feeling to kind of change because... Like you said, you haven't done it before, but then development director is kind of like, he's actually given a massive title to what yeah, yeah. he is. But then like, because uh, most most people kind of get there and they kind of feel like, they, well, not changing, but like they kind of alter the persona or they put on a persona for work. Yeah. And then at home, there's a separate persona. So it's yeah. kind of like, the, the, yeah. that was a massive draw. But so how do you kind of like, mm. just keep it? I, I, I'm, I'm going to go back and be mm. dead honest in terms of, I was probably at points a bit of a pain. Okay. Um, because I was quite arrogant. Mm. I believed I could. I, yeah. I, I well, really, naturally. There was a confidence to say, I think I can deliver the solution. Mm. So sometimes, and the one thing I have learned is humility is more important than arrogance. Mm-hmm. So early doors in my career, I thought I was invincible. I just thought, you, yeah. know, you give me a problem, I can solve it, I'll make it happen. Mm. 
Probably as I've gone on, well, no, definitely as I've gone on, I've realized that you haven't always got the solution and you've got to be prepared to ask for help and mm. you've got to be prepared to ask other people's opinions and listen. Mm. You know, so so in the early days, I probably wasn't a very good listener. Mm. And I was just like, I am going for this. Yeah, this yeah. is going to happen. And that got me through the early stage. Now I'm much better at listening. I'm much better at thinking, actually, that's a really good idea that I hadn't thought of. Okay. Um, you know, this whole podcast thing is a new learning yeah, experience yeah. for me. So, yeah, so you 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 evolve as a person as you get older. Mm. But I'm glad I was cocky when I was. No, I was going to ask it. Yeah, I was. Yeah. I was really pleased because that gave me a determination. And, mm. and you know, if somebody said you can't do that, I was going to break down that wall and make sure it mm. happened. And tennis at that time you know, was was very middle class. It was very, you wear white clothes like Wimbledon. Mm-hmm. You you know, there's etiquette. And yeah. I wanted to make it a bit more edgy and a bit more, uh, you know, dynamic. And we mm. did. We did. We made a big difference. So uh, Yeah, I was just going to go on to that in terms of like that uh, that persona. Because I feel like, especially when you're younger, you got to have the energy about it. Yeah, cause yeah. Especially at them ages where you're, let's say, 20 to 25, that's kind of where you're discovering who you are. And when you're discovering who you are, you're kind of more insecure. You're kind of more like, you're more reactive to situations rather than proactive. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so I, think, I feel like it's better to be driven and focused, especially at that age, because then at least you'll get halfway there. Yeah, and yeah. Then, and then kind of like bring the humility. If you can do it at the start, that's great. Then you're ahead of the game. But if yeah. you can't, then I feel like having that um, that self-confidence, that self-belief will push you further than what someone else that can't do it uh, yeah. will do. Yeah, mm. and, and probably one of the things I think it's overthinking as well. Overthinking is, is the biggest thing. I don't, yeah. I don't dwell on things. I'm lucky mm. in, that, in that sense. But, but if I was really honest, I was probably a bit scared. You know, mm. I'd moved away from home. Yeah, I'd gone 120 odd miles to the southwest of England. Mm-hmm. I then thought, ah, oh, yeah, new job. Mm. I'm going to disappear another 150 miles towards London, and yeah, I'm going yeah. to work there. And yeah, so to compensate for being a bit scared and thinking this is a big challenge mm. and, you know, it could go wrong, yeah. I just thought be cocky. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Be confident, yeah, yeah. just just. Is, is that what happen. we were saying earlier in terms of, like, the Joshua Franklin fight? Because obviously that's happened. This yeah, weekend. yeah. But Joshua was kind of, like, he was tentative. He yeah. didn't want to go on the full throttle, but I think it's better to go on the full throttle and then maybe get knocked out yeah. than not. Because it's, it's always worse when you're trying to imagine what it could have been like rather than yeah. what he actually was. Yeah, and I couldn't have done my job mm. if I didn't go full throttle. Mm. Probably the lesson to be learned is that I probably didn't bring people along with me as okay. much then yeah, as yeah. I do now. Okay. So you know, and and you know, at the end of my career, there's got bits I'm going to be mega. I'm proud of the whole career. Mm. I've been really, really lucky and had great opportunities. But I'm probably most proud of the things I've done in the later part of my career. Okay. Because I've developed people and I've helped mm. people to grow. And uh, yeah, But so do you that's... think the this later part of your career that you're most proud of wouldn't have happened if you were for the earlier part? You know what I mean? It's I, like a I would never have got to the end. Because yeah. there was, you, you know, in the world mm. or in Britain, there was a lot cleverer people than I was. Mm-hmm. There was people who had probably much better... Um, ideas of what they wanted to do they got career path and yeah, yeah. uh so i had to be a bit different so i had to be a bit more edgy a bit more i'm going to grab hold of that opportunity and mm. it's going to be mine and i did so yeah. uh, so how do you deal with that them setbacks so you know when you have that uh let's call it cocky arrogance when you're a kid and you're kind of fresh in the game but then when you get hit with the first good right hook like like maybe what, what yeah, we yeah, could have yeah. seen in the joshua franklin fight yeah is how do you kind of like react to that and kind of like stay on your feet and stay grinded and stay driven yeah there was times it's, it's easy when you're cocky but then like when you get hit then it's kind of like how do you keep that up yeah yeah i was probably really lucky mm. so you know, if if I made a hundred decisions while I was at the LTA, seventy might have been right, thirty might have been wrong. Okay. Probably the good thing was the thirty that were wrong weren't so wrong that it mm. wrecked my career. Okay. So I was lucky in the sense that I didn't make massive, massive mistakes. But it was probably fifteen years later that I looked back at 22, 23 year old Adam and thought. I wouldn't have done it that way now. Okay. I would I would do it differently. So, yeah. Um, would, would I have done what differently? The positive stuff or the negative stuff? No, the negative stuff. The so, negative. you know, sometimes okay. I, uh, 
uh, I think I manipulated situations to get what I wanted okay. rather than negotiate uh, a situation. So it's okay. a big difference, isn't mm. it? You know, you manipulate a situation because you want something to happen. Yeah, yeah. it's your narrative. Uh, yeah, which means there's a winner and a loser. Mm -hmm. And I've learned that that, um, that manipulation is not a good thing. Mm. Negotiation to get a win-win is a mm. great thing. Um, but I didn't realize that till 15 years down the line, you know, thinking, yeah, yeah. oh, I wouldn't do it like that now. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, so how does that, let's talk about that. So manipulation, negotiation, because mm. I feel like there's a balance. I feel like both are necessary depending on the situation. Yeah. Because I feel like maybe you wouldn't have had the growth that you had yeah. if you negotiate everything and made it a win-win rather than a win lose yeah, I mean, maybe. You see what I'm um, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the in the early days, so if I if I look at my character, mm. I I wasn't very humble. Mm. I was pretty cocky. Okay. Very confident that I was going to get the right answer, mm. um, and I didn't take people with me as much as I should have done. I okay. took my staff with me. Yeah, yeah. So the people who worked with me, mm. they they came because we created almost like a, a siege mentality. We're going okay, yeah, to make this yeah, happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But a lot of people sort of in the periphery, I probably didn't look after in the way that I would want to now. Okay. Um, and in fact, some people I bumped into, you know, some of the people that I work with in the clubs or whatever, I've come back and said, ah, oh, the new Adam, the mm. old, which is the old Adam, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is improved from the young one. Okay. Um, yeah. But yeah, I wouldn't have got to where I got to mm. without being, bosh, I'm going to make this happen. So. Yeah, yeah. So ain't that kind of like a, a, a double-edged sword kind of like, yeah. yeah, you know, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, you rather have the growth than not. So yeah. I feel like when you got to make a decision, especially when you're younger, I feel like you got to risk it. Like, I'm not saying you got to do something outwardly really bad that you're no. going to like mess up someone else's career. I'm not saying that. No. What, I'm, what I'm trying to say is if you're having a win, which you, you think your win is bigger or more important than their win yeah, for yeah. the for the impact in terms of on yeah. people and, and the actual you got a bit, so situation. Yeah, the things yeah. that I did really, really well in my early career was I really took risks. Mm. So I thought that's what I was just gonna say. I was going to answer that. Yeah, 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 I really took risks because because I could have copied. Mm. I could have played safe and copied what had happened before. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't. I said we're going to do things differently mm. because what we've done before has only worked to that level. We need to get it to that level. Yeah, yeah. we got to take some risks. Mm. So I did that, uh, and then I worked unbelievably hard mm. so you know i just said if it takes 70 hours a week 80 hours a week i'll work 80 hours a week i mm. will never stop until um you get it over the line until i've got it over the line mm. and yeah i mean times were different there because nobody told you about overtime or nobody told you about yeah, yeah. you know time off in lieu it just never happened mm. so i just thought right grab hold of this mm. make it happen and, full throttle yeah and i was yeah. determined so arrogant a bit arrogant probably a great thing at the time, mm. uh, really determined, loved hard work because it wasn't light work mm -hmm. and and enjoyed taking the risks because why not? Yeah, exactly. You only live yeah. once. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so what was the growth? After? Well, actually talk to me about development director and how, how long was that role for and uh, what did you learn? Five years, mm. five years. And so we built a regional structure with 10 offices around the country. We built a county structure with 50 offices around the country mm. and development offices in every, okay. every one of those. Uh, so did things. you build the growth in terms of yeah. different offices? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so what was that like? Oh, that was cool. It was yeah, just... Yeah. Uh, you know, we need we needed uh, we needed staff on the ground. Mm -hmm. We had to get the money. We had to so we were putting bids into funders. We were uh, yeah, just just getting that money, making it happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was great. It was a great yeah, yeah. experience. Really, but just talk me through that because I feel like a lot of people that are listening won't really understand. Like they know what it is, but they won't get how you kind of get there. So like, let's say I don't know, like you're a development director for uh, let's say I don't know year two, year three, and then you you kind of get the first next office. How does that come about? So how does talk okay. me through the the well, way it first, goes? First of yeah. all, we had to um, we had to prove a business case. Mm. So we had to say to to get from point A to point B, so yeah, to yeah. get more participants, mm -hmm. we've got to have skilled people in a local situation who can help do that. Mm -hmm. And so I want to spend this on yeah. that development officer. That development officer is then going to deliver this. Okay, and look at the value of of that. And then we started off, we probably got, well, we did the regions first, and then we said we'll get to the counties, mm. and we ended up with 50 county development officers. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, interestingly, one of those county development officers 
now is the chief executive of UK Sport. Okay. Um, so, you know, yeah, all yeah. those years ago, somebody's come from that first job that they had mm. and they've gone and they're the chief exec of UK Sport, which is mm. a really proud thing for, for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was it was doing, getting the business case right. And, I, and that was another thing I learned. You, uh, everything requires a return on investment. Mm. So you're going to do something. There has to be some improvement as a result of doing it. Mm-hmm. And that, and and I learned that lesson really early on. Okay. Um, you know, so if you want to grow, if you want to develop, if you want things to move forward, mm. you've got to take risks. You've got to spend to mm. make that happen. But at the end of it, you've got to get a return on investment. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's how I. So how did how did you ensure that? So obviously you got the people on the ground. You got people that are engaging with people to kind of get them into the clubs or to get them into whatever the business model was. So how do you ensure that it's a success? Because a success? obviously you're dependent in a way on those people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. they could easily just do their normal, like whatever they paid for and then call it a day. So yeah. how do you kind of so, make sure that they hit the target? Yeah. And it didn't work with every one of the 50, yeah. some some left. Mm-hmm. Um, but the majority, we, we created a team. So, and that's probably the greatest skill I've had since I started mm-hmm. was creating teams of people who believe in something. Okay. So we created a mission and we mm. said, as a team of people, uh, we're in this together. There's no yeah. hierarchy. We're going to make, we're going to make this happen. Mm. And yeah, it became almost evangelical. People were going, mm-hmm. I really want to be a part of this. Yeah, and yeah. I really want to be. And, and so, yeah. And you recruit like-minded people mm. and you set a standard. So I set a standard as to what I thought was, we should be working towards. Mm-hmm. And thankfully- Do you remember that standard? I, I, I can't. It's, it yeah. was work hard, be honest. Okay, you know, yeah, yeah. Be, the, be, be the determined. Same principles, that same principles I had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just said, and these people bought into it. Mm. And the vast, and then you do training and development as well. Mm-hmm. So get, um, you know, give these people- the training and development to be able to do their job properly and mm-hmm. support them, you know. So when they're feeling tired, help them. Mm-hmm. When they're feeling a bit unsure, help them. Mm-hmm. When they so it's about creating a you know a, a just a great team, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, just one more question on that. You know, in terms of recruitment, mm-hmm. so how do you kind of see the sprinkle in the eye or that that twitch or that mm-hmm. twinkle? Yeah. Uh, so how, how how do you kind of realize that they might have what it takes? Like obviously you're not getting you won't get it hundred percent right all the time, but like how do you no, get no. that that feeling? Or is it just a gut or? Yeah, I mean, I when when I recruit, and at Oaks, we're recruiting some very big jobs at the, at the moment, some really large jobs. Okay. Um, and I always look at the personality first. Mm. So what is this person telling me? You know, how much do they care? Mm. How, how, how much are they going to go the extra mile? Mm. Are they going to play within the team and add value to the team? And then, you know, what are their technical skills, uh, okay. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so, yeah. so I don't, I don't p- particularly look at the CVs and the, uh, and the cover letter. Mm. You do, but that's not the most important thing. I want okay. to sit and talk to these people and yeah. say, mm, I believe in you. Mm. I don't believe in you. Mm. And, and that comes, maybe that comes from my, the fact that I've not got a degree. Mm. And so I don't judge people by whether they've got a degree or not. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, so do you place any importance on it? So obviously you, you don't do, uh, judge them negatively, but do you judge them positively? Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Mm. Um, I don't think I did. Okay. Uh, so early earlier on, I, I thought you don't need a degree. And of course, I came through a time where it wasn't that. It wasn't that important. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, if I, if I think people go away to university, mm. and my kids are, two of my kids are at university, and they go away they learn to live on their own mm-hmm. they learn to look after themselves yeah, they yeah. learn to budget mm-hmm. they learn to socialize they learn all those interactions mm-hmm. that's really important and then they learn academic stuff which mm-hmm. helps but what i'm much more interested in is what do they do in their personal time okay you know have they got a, a saturday job mm. have they got stuck in have they built up you know, something that they want to have, they've got a passion mm. outside of just academic because, you know, inevitably somebody goes, if somebody does a sports management degree yeah, yeah. and then comes and works for Oaks, their first three months is learning how to apply good theory mm-hmm. into the real world. Yeah, yeah. And there's a massive gap. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. 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 So I, I, I look day. much more, what is the person mm. and then great. They've got a degree. So okay. they bring, um, they bring yeah, extra yeah. skills. So mm. that's the way I look. So, so you look at it as in real life skills in terms of like they've actually worked a job and they know how to kind of yeah. hold it down and negotiate and kind of navigate that. Yeah. 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 And somebody, you know, uh, 
uh, my kids have been very fortunate. They do nice things. They go on mm. nice holidays. But, you know, taking my daughter, she's at university. She teaches dance. She's got, she works for Volleyball England in a part-time capacity. Okay. She worked in Nando's, mm. you know, for like a year and a bit just to earn her own money because she mm. wanted to be a bit independent. So how did you build that in them? Yeah, uh, I just told I you. I imagine you're really proud of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. am. I am. Um, yeah. And actually, the toughest management job you have is of your kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah because my you dad want to spoil them and you end, but equally, you want to teach them. Mm. I just said, guys, you'll get where you get by really hard work mm. and being a nice person. You know, look after people around you. Mm. And uh, But anyway, she, yeah, so I'm really proud of her because mm. she's doing, she's on for a first She's doing a liberal arts degree, which is not an easy degree. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, she's holding down th- sort of two jobs now because Nando's, uh, she packed up. So, okay, okay, uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah. she's still got two jobs and and working hard, which mm. is good. So how did Oaks come about after the development? Director? Okay, so I, from, from there, I went uh, and became development director and then deputy chief executive at UK Athletics. Okay, yeah. yeah. So I worked in athletics then for eight years mm-hmm. uh, and... When I joined, the sport was in financial peril, so it was okay. really, really in a bad state. And uh, so, what did you join? <laughs> well, we bought, we we uh, we took some massive risks. Okay. We bought the TV rights back. We uh, restructured the way the business worked. Mm. We got Norwich Union to be a big sponsor, and then in a really proud thing, we got Norwich Union then Aviva to invest 50 million quid okay. uh, in the sport. Yeah, yeah. We got the BBC to invest. We got Adidas to invest. Mm. And then we grew it to a, you know, the yeah. richest athletic governing body in the world. Okay. So, so when um, you say we got all these sponsorships, how did you get them? <laughs> we yeah. just uh, went and knocked on doors okay, okay. and said, you should be investing mm. in athletics because it's an amazing sport. Okay. But why? Because they yeah. look at the bottom line. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, no, so the way we did it yeah. was we said, um, I, I'll use, i got to be careful with using Norwich Union as an example, but if you okay. go to an insurance company yeah, yeah. and you go to an insurance company and it's a bit boring, isn't it? Mm. It's a bit dull. You, yeah, who yeah. wants to buy life insurance? Who wants to buy house insurance? Mm. So if you attach insurance to um, a sexy sport like athletics where you've got, you know, Usain Bolt and all of these yeah, different yeah. athletes, that helps the brand to look more impressive and the brand to look relevant. Mm-hmm. So that was part one. You know, if you, insurance company, attach yourself to athletics, mm-hmm. it's going to make your product look really relevant and current and good. You also then want to demonstrate that you care about communities. Mm. So invest in our grassroots programs. So we had a load of grassroots programs to get people involved. Mm -hmm. And we said to the insurance company, we'll use some of your money to make sure you are in every community in the country. Okay. So, you know, if a mum or a dad are thinking about uh, um, they're taking their kids to athletics Mm -hmm. and then they suddenly are thinking about car insurance. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, this insurance company. So we just sold a business. We created a business case mm-hmm. and proved uh, that athletics was an incredibly good thing for them to do. And they okay, did. Okay. And, and they invested in the sport for, well, all of the eight years I was there, they were mm-hmm. investing in the sport. So, you, so when you said that it was a financial ruin when you first joined. Mm. Yeah. So then, obviously, first of all, you got to build a product. Absolutely. So how did that come about? So well, what, was the, what was number one? So you've kind of sat in the office now and then you've, Obviously, you know that it's a financial ruin. So clearly, that was it. The fact that was athletics booming in terms of people playing it, or yeah, athletics. Okay. So, so the product was yeah. good, um, but there okay. was no public facing way of seeing. Okay, it. yeah, yeah. Okay. So what we did is we. Uh, yeah. So if you watch the Diamond League Athletics, uh, mm-hmm. the Alexander Stadium, yeah, yeah, we we were the people who made sure that. World Athletics brought Diamond League to the country. Okay, okay, yeah. So yeah. Crystal Palace, you know, yeah. about. A thousand people used to go and watch the Crystal Palace Grand Prix. Mm. Two years after we started, we were selling out Crystal Palace, you know, weeks before mm. because we made it more entertaining. Yeah. We, you know, we had virtual pacemakers, we had noise when the javelin was in the air, we had okay. drones fly around dropping t-shirts. Yeah, yeah. It was we more had, of an event. Yeah, it was yeah, yeah. much more of an event. And okay. so we said, you know, the people sitting in those stands are customers mm. and customers want an experience. Yeah, and yeah. therefore, let's give them an experience. Mm. But we, we did that to all sorts of different parts of athletics. Oh. And then probably 
the sport had been quite fragmented. So there was, you know, loads of people beating each other, not mm. literally beating yeah, each other, yeah. but politically beating each other up. Mm. And we said, we're going to die if we do that. Yeah. So let's get together and become a, the okay. same principle yeah, yeah. of how do you create a team of people mm -hmm. who share a passion for doing something. Mm. Was that easy just because you're, you're all back against the wall, kind of like it's, you're all in difficulty? Mm. No, yeah. it was the hardest thing I have ever yeah, yeah, yeah. done by a long, long way. Because um, uh, I remember there was once, I can't remember which paper, I think the Daily Mail, and there was a big article that said, watch out, the bogeyman might help you. Mm. Which and I was the bogeyman. Okay. So you know, because we were making loads of change, mm. we were upsetting loads of people. Mm. Loads of the purists in the sport hated what we were doing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so yeah, it was a constant for eight years. It was a bit of a battle. Mm. But but at the end of that, uh, athletics had had its two most successful Olympic cycles. So mm -hmm. we won, you know, more medals than ever before. Mm. We'd got more world record holders, more, you know, high class athletes than we'd ever had before. Mm. And we created a product and, you know, and, and my, my philosophy, you take on a job and you are the caretaker of that job until mm -hmm. you leave. Yeah. And therefore I've always set a thing that if you, 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 whenever you enter a job, you need a starting point. Mm. What state is this sport in? Mm -hmm. If when you leave, it's better, mm -hmm. you've done a good job. Okay. And so however much better, mm. you know, that's, so I always start a job, think, where am I today? Mm -hmm. And I always leave a job thinking it's better. Okay. When I've left. Yeah. yeah. And that can't be bad, can it? Mm. No, no, 100%. Uh, you know, that, yeah, so that's, yeah. so then from, I did youth athletics for eight years, loved it for most of it. Some okay. of it was really, really hard. Yeah. yeah. And then I joined. So, you know, one quick question. You're yeah. on the Daily Mail article and they're calling you the bogeyman. Yeah. 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 So, obviously, well, number one, you're, you're pissed off. And then number two, you're thinking, I'm going to do even better. But then there's also like a thing of, am I good enough? Like, you know, that, that third aspect. Yeah. So, how do you kind of like keep that third aspect down and okay. focus on number two? Okay. I was probably still in my cocky phase mm. at that. At okay, that yeah. So, so I, I told was, you it helped you. I was, I was still thinking <laughs> I was a bit immortal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was getting to think less immortal okay. by that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was still cocky. So I still thought, yeah, I can make things happen and I can okay. do things. And still a bit arrogant, and mm. probably I'm still a bit arrogant now. But anyway, I was, I was, so I was in that phase. The bogeyman thing, I absolutely loved. Okay, and I loved it because I thought I've created a reaction. Okay, yeah, and yeah, if yeah. you create a reaction. Mm then it was going to make a difference. Mm. And so, and it was almost, uh, it was almost, I was deputy chief executive mm -hmm. and my boss, um, Dave Moorcroft, who was uh, the, the most wonderful man I ever worked with. He was okay. incredible. Uh, he was such a lovely person and the sport of athletics loved him. Mm. So if he was the the good cop, okay, okay. I was the, the bad, bad cop. cop. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was quite a good thing. And I was mm. quite comfortable with that. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, so okay. I, it was so quite- So you got a fed off it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought, yeah, yeah I can be the bad man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's good publicity anyway. It, it was, yeah, exactly. it was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Especially if you got someone ahead of you that people respect and people like, then you can do what you like. Absolutely. Yeah, and, yeah. and it needed, we needed mm. some, um, somebody said to me, uh, I'm trying to think exactly what they, what they said. Yeah, negotiation is a blood sport. Mm. So, you know, you don't get anywhere without, you know, sort of uh, creating some, reactions mm. you know, some people are going to love it some people yeah. are not going to love it well emotion is the best thing in the world yeah yeah because absolutely. if people are emotional about something that means okay yeah yeah and sport is emotional isn't it mm. so yeah mm. yeah it works like yeah. if you look at what um eddie hearn and barry hearn are done in boxing oh. well then that's, a, that's basically what you just said there in terms of like you love them or hate them but you know about them so you like you'll tune into your show even yeah if you hate them even if you love yeah, them yeah, like, yeah. yeah yeah and there's somebody i remember a journalist saying to mm. me you know dog bites man no news Mm. Man bites dog, great news. Okay. Because yeah, yeah. it's in the news. It's, yeah, it's yeah. like, you know, my yeah, God, yeah. did that yeah, happen? Yeah, it's and, a shock. Uh, yeah, 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 the shock. Yeah, yeah. And I, so, I've, I've heard that saying before, you know, hey, I like it, I like it a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But it is true, isn't it? Mm. You know, the, sen the sensationalism of, of news. Yeah. And, and so I knew, um, and we all knew, that for the sport to change and improve, mm. it had to have like a little jolt of electricity okay. to, yeah, yeah. to make it change. Um, you know. So I, what was the inspiration behind making it into an event? So obviously like it's, it's obvious when you're looking back that that was the right thing to do. But when you're there at the time, you're kind of like, it's, it's a big give and take in terms of like, will it actually work, will it not work? And yeah. and in terms of the whole situation where you're throwing them, 
uh, tops of the um, what, what do you call it? The javelins. The uh, javelins. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you, you uh, got the music going. You got everything going. You're making yeah. the whole buzz of it. Yeah. Yeah. So two questions. Where was the inspiration behind that? And what was the feeling like in terms of like, was it give or take, or were you fully confident that it's actually going to work? I wasn't fully confident mm. it was actually going to work. Yeah. Uh, That's the best place to be. In pretty, even. pretty confident. Mm. Um, and I knew what I liked. Okay. So, and if I was a spectator paying 20 quid to go to an event, yeah, yeah. did I want to watch something where it was fairly boring, mm. fairly, you know, yeah. not no superstars, yeah, yeah. there was no drama, there was no, yeah, yeah. you know, we weren't creating like A the buzz. Joshua Franklin yeah, buzz. Yeah. Did I want to watch that mm. or did I want to watch something where you know, we'd got the two best sprinters in the world going to mm. go against each other and they hated each other, yeah, yeah. you know, and then in the, in the sort of uh, 5,000 meters, which is a long race, mm. you've got a virtual pacemaker on the track mm. that shows where the world record is and they're running, they've got pacemakers and they're running to that. Yeah, That's yeah. what I wanted to watch. Okay. So, you know, we, we tried to create what we thought was going to appeal to the mass mm. and it did. Uh, but but also um, you know was going to appeal to sponsors and mm. it did so we I suppose we got it right yeah so was or well, clearly you did but was there a blueprint that you followed in terms of someone else had done it before or anything or was it you just come off it on the back of your own yeah head, I think probably um, sport was changing a bit mm. so it was becoming a bit more spectator focused it was becoming a bit more so yeah we took. We took inspiration from other things, mm. you know, how football was changing okay. how, yeah, yeah. Uh, and thought, yeah, athletics can do that as well. Mm. Um, and we, and we, yeah. yeah. So, so why, why give up on it? Like, why not give up? Why kind of change okay. the uh, direction? Yeah, it got to a point. So I'd done eight years mm. and Dave left. Uh, he'd, he'd had enough and he wanted to, to leave. Okay. And I felt we'd done a journey and I, and, mm. and I didn't think I'd got the energy to go another, um, cycle and okay. then i really luckily got offered uh, a job to work in the america's cup as a commercial director of a british america's cup team okay come across the america's cup no no is that golf no yacht racing so okay, you, no, 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 you no. want to watch it because yeah, it's yeah. the coolest sport okay, ever yeah, so yeah. if you imagine formula one yeah, yeah on steroids okay so this is like yeah, yeah. i've uh, never heard of it you know never heard of it okay you you have yeah. a look at i'll show you something afterwards and, okay uh, yeah, yeah. but anyway the america's cup so i moved firstly to uh portsmouth so okay. i'd moved from london to birmingham for yeah. athletics birmingham back down yeah. to the south coast for america's cup yeah, yeah i knew nothing about yacht racing okay i knew about selling commercial mm. sponsorship uh this was a brand new team mm. um then i moved out to valencia and lived in Valencia. Okay. Um, and my office was a super yacht. Yeah. So yeah, basically, yeah. I was sitting on a super yacht, yeah, yeah. Um, entertaining guests, doing America's Cup. So that mm. was very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it was just a new adventure. Okay. And and. But how old were you at this point? Oh, probably. What thirty seven? Forty. Yeah. Oh. Thirty seven, thirty eight, maybe a bit older than that. Okay. Thirty nine, okay. maybe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. Mm. So it was a new adventure. Yeah. yeah and um no, that sounds amazing, you know. Oh, it was incredible. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I used to go to I used to go to work in flip flops and shorts. Okay. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. On a super yacht and uh, drink champagne. Yeah, yeah. It don't get a lot better. Yeah. So, uh, so how do you say driven? Like? How did how do you say driven? Um because yeah. it's like well, you're, you're on the yacht. It's kind yeah, of like yeah. Yeah. But um so you know, when you, people give you mm. cool opportunities, yeah, yeah. Um you can either choose to be a bit bland and a bit passive with that mm. opportunity or grab it. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, grab it. I'm going to grab it because yeah, yeah, this yeah. is incredibly exciting. Mm. This is why wouldn't I want to grab hold of this? It's a brilliant opportunity. Mm. And, and and so that's that's what I did. Okay. I, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 So, which was very cool. Mm. Very cool. What was the, uh, the, obviously the threshold higher because obviously yacht racing is bigger pay, bigger reward. Yeah. Bigger yeah. loss of love. Oh, it was a, it yeah, was a yeah. very it was a really well paid job. Mm. Yeah, but a lot more money than than yeah, yeah. I No, but even in the actual budget in terms of like oh. what your your actual job was. Oh, it's yeah, huge. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. It's so huge. the gamble's bigger. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So all the pressure, like. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot. It's yeah. a lot. <laughs> okay. Um, but but if you're gonna be if if you're gonna want to rise to nearer the top of an organization. Mm. Pressure comes with it. Yeah, hundred oh, percent. If, if you don't like the pressure, mm. then that's definitely not not yeah. for you. And I, um, and I, I sort of thrived off the adrenaline of wanting to do different things. Mm. And, um, I mean, I was having a conversation with my dad like the other day, and we were talking about the fact that like pressure comes 
the pressure is the only constant in life. Yeah, like, regardless yeah. of what position you're in, in terms of like, like you could be in a normal nine to five and there's pressure. Like, because what I see a lot yeah. nowadays, especially after the coronavirus, is people want to run away from the job to the home. Yeah, but that never happens. Yeah, like because when you're at home, you're worried that I'm gonna come in next day. So yeah, yeah. So it's better to be kind of like happy doing the job or somewhat content. And then when you go home, you're more relaxed because you're not thinking about the next day. Absolutely. Because if you're pissed off going to the job, then the next day you gotta go back. Absolutely. Then you're pissed off at home thinking about the job. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And I and I wanted. Um, I've never been driven by money, mm. so salary was never the thing that drove me. So I didn't mm. think I've got to earn this. I've got to yeah, earn yeah. this. I've got to earn this. I've got to no, earn no, this. no. I was driven by how cool the job was yeah, yeah. and how big a challenge it was. Mm. And and that then then the money was lucky because it came with it. Yeah, you know, yeah, I could, that's I a byproduct. Sort of, yeah, 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 the byproduct was the money, and mm. the byproduct was the status, and mm. all of those things. But I was driven by this is a cool job. Yeah, yeah. and and I didn't. What well, one thing I really realized, I didn't want to be a number in the team. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be the leader of the team. Okay. So really quickly, yeah, yeah. I worked out that I liked leading more than I liked following. Mm. Um, and that wasn't that I wanted to be the big boss and everybody look and say, oh, he's the big boss. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to be the person who was driving it forward. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, and I, and one, once you've got that, mm. you can't let go of that. Nah, yeah, I know. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. that's so probably mm. that's what's driven yeah, yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. So where did that start? Was, did that start in the legislature, centre, Fox Alley's, when you became the deputy? Yeah, yeah, probably, yeah. probably. Okay, I okay. just um, you got a taste for it, yeah. Yeah, and mm. then I'm very comp- Fox Hollies. It probably started. Yeah, and then it grew and grew and grew. You know, managing a leisure centre, mm. winning awards, and then going on to the LTA and all of these different things. Yeah, yeah. I liked having an opportunity to make decisions. I mm. liked being at the top. Mm. And maybe that's the arrogance bit. Okay. So maybe yeah, that's yeah. still there. Yeah, yeah. I become a better leader because I become more humble, mm. but I still like leading. Mm. And and yeah, and I feel- Were you the captain in a team before that? Uh, so in your schooling days? Yeah, like, possibly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I was quite sporty. So yeah, yeah. I, was, I was lucky. Yeah. No, I, was I'm, I feel like what you're saying there, I can relate to a bit because I've always been the one that's making decisions or doing yeah. this or saying this or like, I've got to do this. Like, and that's natural for me. Yeah. Like, it's always just been like that. I think it's just the way I'm built. Like the yeah. way I've seen my granddad be, the way he acts, kind of like, that's, that's yeah. where I kind of got it from, that DNA aspect yeah. of it. Yeah, and yeah. I always thought, like like you, I always thought mm. you don't get anywhere if you're not going to go after things. Oh, no, you know, yeah. you've got yeah. you've got to drive, you've got yeah, to push. Yeah. And so and you've got to be proactive yeah. rather than reactive. Like, exactly. 99% exactly. of people, like, that's why when I, t- I speak to youngsters these days with our Community Foundation, I talk to them because a lot of them have this energy, that, yeah. especially ones that come from low-income backgrounds where they've yeah. got this energy that they want to do something, but then they kind of like get sucked into what everyone else does in terms yeah, yeah. of like they get scared or they get shook or yeah. they get a bit tentative and then boom, yeah. that's it, it collapses. Yeah, I agree. Mm. Yeah, you... I mean, the title is brilliant, isn't it? Student yeah, yeah. of the game. Yeah, yeah. If you don't play the game whole yeah, appreciate heart, you. you're never going to learn. Mm, yeah, exactly. Uh, and that and that is um, amazing. Mm. You need you need life experience to to grow. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Otherwise, otherwise you won't. So yeah. So I think I I've just had yeah. I I say something quite often when people say to me, "What well, you know? How, how do you find your job?" And I mm. say, "Well, I'll tell you when I get a proper job." Yeah. Okay. Be- because. Yeah, yeah. I've had the coolest, I've just had a life which yeah, is full yeah. of fun. Mm. And yeah, it's had really hard times. And yes, I've had disasters where I mm. think, oh my God, that was not, didn't work and yeah, all yeah. of that. But more often than not, I thought I, I've got the coolest job. Mm. And somebody says to me, you know, what, what, what's it like running Oaks? And I could say, well, it's like having a, being a kid mm. in a playpen yeah. with a load of toys. Because okay. people drop toys in and say, yeah. work it all out. You've got these puzzles. Yeah. It's just big adult playpen with big mm. adult toys you yeah know, it's, it's the same sort of the thing. fundamental is the same it? yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. um plus if you, th- if you think about it as a game like you said there you don't want to take it too seriously it's like so when you get the hard moments and that you just kind of take it on the chin yeah because it's like you know that it's not it's not too affecting what your current life is or what whatever's going on it's just a phase no, no. yeah yeah You're probably probably the biggest thing that i as you grow into mm. uh when I started, I was leading a solution. Mm. So I thought, problem, I'm the leader, I'm leading the solution. Mm-hmm. Now, as your career goes on and on and on and on, yeah. I realize I'm leading groups of people. Okay. And the people are what matters. Mm. So if 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 Oaks or any job I've ever had, 
if the people weren't brilliant, mm. you'd never succeed. Mm. And so, so I spend a huge amount of my time, and I'd hope my team would say this, investing time in mm. them, trying to make them better people, you know, in terms of giving them yeah, a yeah. career. Well, and I actually think I've got massive admiration for you because mm. I think when I started, it it was nowhere near as difficult as when you're starting. Okay. I think now the world is a lot smaller place. Mm. You know, we've got social media, we've yeah, got yeah. all of the things that are going on. Yeah, more My life was simpler. Mm. Uh, you know, so I came from a simpler sort of set of, or a context, mm. you've got a lot harder. Yeah, uh, but I think, well, you say that, but I feel like it's ad adaptability. Because yeah. I feel like a lot of people, they kind of like, they buy into that, you know, when you buy into the pressure. Yeah, you yeah. become the pressure, then it consumes you yeah, because you're not in control of the narrative. Absolutely. So if you take it back, like if you look at the phone or or you're saying that's that pressure and that, that's just people talking. Yeah. Like I remember, like for example, when we first started this podcast, uh, I put I, I said something about boxing or like I made a clip up or whatever, mm. and that was the first clip that went semi-viral. Like you got like thirty thousand clips or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But that I wasn't interested in that. But then when I saw the comments and all that, every mm. single one of them was negative, saying, "Oh, he's saying this because of this." Da, 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 da. And yeah. I took it like it was nothing. Because yeah. I took you like it's actually a success. Like when you're coming yeah, back yeah. to what you were saying about um about the bogeyman, uh, the bogeyman. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I, I looked at it and I thought, you know what, that's good. Because I'm actually getting some kind of reaction. Because exactly. you want reaction rather than just them saying, oh, it's a good point, but that's it. Like they don't think about it afterwards. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. So I think emotion, like what people got to realize is, it's a good thing. I you're, agree. On you yourself and yeah. on other people, because yeah. emotion is the one that carries through, yeah. rather than just words and. And action. the thing, you know, have mm. life values. So you know, the lesson from all of this mm. is internally have some life values. And my yeah. life values were work really hard because mm -hmm. you don't get anything if you don't. Yeah, yeah. Be passionate about. It. If you're not passionate about it, yeah. find something you are yeah, passionate exactly. about because yeah, yeah. it ain't going to work otherwise. Mm. Look after people around you mm. and care about people. And if you do, if you do all those three things, you can't go far wrong. Mm. The one the one thing I was going to say, um, I was lucky because I came from a quite a privileged, you know, background. Mm. And that makes it harder, though. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. But some equally, aspects. equally, mm -hmm. you know, my mum and dad had got good jobs. My mum mm. and dad ran businesses. My mum and dad were, you know, so I was in a. It, I, I, I fell to a point, there was a bit of a head start. Mm. But actually, is that an excuse for not doing it if you come from a, 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 a less sort of uh, privileged background? Mm. No, it's not. Mm. You know, and, and I would say to any young people, and I'd love to meet with your, your young people and yeah. go, you know, guys, you, you, can, you can achieve things. Mm. You know, just experiment, be mm. ambitious. Yeah. And, you know, if, if every time you go to work, you're thinking, I'm going to be a bit better, I'm going to be yeah, a bit yeah. better, I'm going to work yeah. a bit harder, I'm going to, I'm going to demonstrate that, that mm. I can do a great job. That's not a bad thing to do. A hundred percent. Like, you got to have, you can't have fear in life. Because that's no. what I get a lot of from, especially people like in my own family circles or like people that I know, mm. is fear. That's what consumes them. Like they, yeah. they have fear before they've even begun. Yeah. So, you know, let, let's say for example, I don't know, they're creating a business or like they, they'll say, I'm going to start a business. And then they realize that you got to pay an accountant, you got to get this open, this open. And then they're like, oh, sorry, it's too much headache. Because they're scared. Because yeah, yeah. they don't understand the accountant, you know, they don't understand this. Then they're like, oh, forget it, I don't want to do it. Nice. Or company's house or, you know, whatever it is. Yeah, they're yeah. like, oh, documentation, oh, flick, I'm, that's, I'm gone. Yeah. And they go back to the nine and five, but they might have had the ability in terms of the actual business, but maybe not understanding yeah. the legislation and all that. But all you got to do is find someone that understands and mm. just be willing to learn. That, yeah, that's all it comes down to. It's just that willing to learn. Be, yeah. yeah, attitude and determination. Yeah. And just not have that fear everything. that, oh, you might lose a bit of money, but everyone loses money. Like No one starts a business and doesn't lose money from the beginning. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> I could, we could, with Oaks, we could have gone, we could have gone bankrupt loads of times. Yeah, exactly. You know, where we thought we mm. can't pay, uh, we can't pay ourselves. We yeah, can't, yeah. Yeah, we, we had loads of disasters along mm. the way. But you you keep you keep growing and you mm. keep going and you keep going and it is it's about passion it's about attitude it's mm -hmm. about determination it's about yeah I mean, yeah, yeah it's I'm mean, having a giggle as well having yeah, fun. yeah 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 hundred percent you're not having fun at no point man no no no, yeah, no. Yeah. no. you would rather find a job that you actually have fun at so then you know when you're going from just the final beat so when you're going from um, uh, the, yeah, the, the the yacht, the yachting, and um, the yacht racing. That's yeah. the one. I just forgot what it was. Then yacht racing, and then how, what's that journey from then to Oaks? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so was that quite quick or no? No, there, there was. Um, and why? Okay, um, I would have stayed in the America's Cup till the end of my career. Okay, because I loved it. It mm. was just the coolest thing. And yeah, uh, yeah. when you watch Ineos Team GB now, that mm. was the team that I the pre. 
version of that was the team I was involved in. Oh, okay, so yeah. when you watch it, it's so cool. Yeah. yeah. And uh, basically the cup, um, it's a really complicated story, but the two team, two team owners, billionaires, mm -hmm. mega billionaires, started having a fight. Okay. So the whole thing got put on pause. Okay. And so there was no job. Mm. And so uh, the, f the best job I'd ever had suddenly became no job. Mm. So I thought I'm going to set up um, the agency. Okay. So it was forced on me mm -hmm. because, um, and I could have gone back. So I could have gone back to it when the cup started mm. again. But by that time I'd set up Oaks. And, and when I set it up, I really hadn't got an idea of how I thought it would go. Mm -hmm. And we are now... 15 years yeah, you know, yeah. we and we've sold into a into a plc so mm. now we're part of a much bigger group okay uh we're going to grow 10 times bigger over the next five years mm. um so two questions there so when they uh obviously uh, letting go of the america's cup and the yacht racing mm. what was that feeling like really sad yeah yeah cause i can tell because really <laughs> we're talking really? about it because it's like you're chilling in valencia one moment and then next moment you're not yeah it was the best job yeah. i ever had yeah, I mean, yeah it was just so cool it's mm. just amazing however it was the best thing that ever happened okay because it forced forced me to go back into uncomfortable zone yeah yeah, yeah. and and the oaks is the thing I'm most proud of. Okay. Because, you know, you know with starting a business, you mm. start a business and massive proportion of businesses go bust in year yeah. one. Oh, yeah. We didn't. Mm. Massive proportion of businesses go bust after five years. Mm. We didn't. You know, very few businesses managed to get sold mm. into a much bigger PLC company. So, mm. you know, we did that. Um, so we built this company, you know, and, and if you just said to me 15 years ago, Will you do the strategic planning for UEFA? Mm -hmm. I go, well, you, you're having yeah. a laugh. It's yeah, not yeah. going to happen. We now do all of the strategic mm -hmm. planning all across Europe for football. Mm. Um, you know, UEFA are a big client of ours. FIFA are a client of ours. Mm. So, you know, we we work with some massive clients, mm. um, and that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so you know, when you find it something and it's your baby and it's mm. yeah. Obviously, it's very hard to kind of give that kind of a bit away in terms of forming into a PLC. Yeah, it was really, then, yeah. that yeah. was hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that talk to me about that. Well, I mean, probably the hardest thing is for 15 years, I haven't had a boss. Mm. I know you got one. Yeah, yeah. That's, what, that's what I'm trying to get at. And then I've got one. Yeah. Um, and you're a man that likes to be in charge. Right? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. And, I, and it's really nice because I'm still in charge of Oaks. Mm. And, and, but I had to really learn and there were certain things because it's a big PLC group, mm -hmm. they have rules, regulations, yeah, policies, yeah. procedures. I hate all that stuff. But I had to put those into Oaks. Mm. Uh, and that was hard. Yeah, there was moments where I thought I, I made my money when I sold it. Mm. Um, I don't need I don't need the job for the money sense, mm -hmm. but I love the job. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, but we've we've I've stood up for what I think is right. Mm. The PLC has changed a few things yeah, yeah. that I wanted, okay. and I've changed a few things. It's about compromise, isn't it? Compromise, yeah. And, yeah. and the other thing was, uh, the the guys who work in Oaks are a family. Mm. I care passionately about those people. Mm -hmm. You know, they've grown up with me over fifteen years, okay. and, and Oaks wouldn't be there without them. Mm -hmm. uh, and therefore, I felt me hanging around protected their growth. Mm. And so, and and mm. now I'm massively excited. Because okay. we're going to grow ten times. We're, we're, yeah, yeah. we're we've got four big new director uh, posts out at the mm -hmm. moment, which are big salaried jobs. We're going to get you know some fantastic people join the organisation. Mm. So there's so, the next so, yeah. adventure. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. Because interesting. Because I don't know. I don't know. Maybe well, I'm thirty five years before you, so it's kind of like I don't know. I, I don't see myself doing that kind of like I don't know how you do it in terms of that letting go. Okay. You know? Yeah, okay. you, you see where I'm coming from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. But you know, we were talking about don't overthink things. Yeah. yeah. So if you just said, how, how old are you now? 20, uh, 22. 22. Yeah, yeah. So if you just said to the 22 year old Adam, yeah, yeah. what's it going to look yeah. like by the time yeah, you're yeah. old and a bit fatter yeah. than you, you were, <laughs> I wouldn't have a clue. Yeah, yeah. So don't. It, no, I'm not overthinking. As, I'm doing it for the sake of the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so so what, what, I, what I've always tried to do is mm. just think, Go for the next adventure. Go for the next adventure. Keep okay, going. Okay. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, and and in every situation, mm. you have to compromise, don't you? In yeah, yeah. Oaks, we, we've had, the way I reconciled having a boss was we've got hundreds of bosses because mm. we've got clients. 
Yeah. And so the clients are paying you money, so they're your boss. Mm. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And so what's the difference? Mm. The, the person paying my wages yeah, yeah. is my boss, but yeah. no difference but to it, a client. It's just you. It's in your brain. It's yeah, you yeah. against you. Like, with anything in life, it's you against you, but it's that. It's your ego mainly. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. obviously the client's your boss, but with the client, it's kind of you're pushing the narrative. Yeah, of yeah. like, look, you can do this. But with a boss in terms of like, on paper, they're your boss. So it's kind of like your yeah. ego can't really... Like no, you no, got no. to compromise the no. ego, no. in a sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, have. I have. Yeah, don't yeah. make me think about it too deeply. <laughs> <laughs> I might start crying. <laughs> yeah, but I've got to. That, yeah. I hate rules, so I am not a great process person. Mm. I don't like filling in forms. I yeah. don't like uh, process at all. Okay. And of course, inevitably, you become mm. part of something much bigger. Yeah, you have to take process on, mm-hmm. and I don't don't like that. But yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, I'm learning. Mm. Every day is a school day. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, no, but it's a great podcast. Appreciate it. Good. Around. Yeah, it's I wonderful. Think we can end you on that note. Yeah, I yeah. yeah yeah I really enjoyed it. Thank you, thank yeah. you, and it's lovely to talk to you as well. Yeah.